Today's deadly mass shooting is just the latest in what has sadly become a common occurrence in the United States. The U.S. is in the grip of an epidemic. The carnage in our nation's schools has become painfully repetitive. The search for solutions divide communities into two camps. It shouldn't have to be your teacher's job to protect your life. More restrictions or more guns. It's a little bit different hugging a five-year-old when you have a gun yeah. <laughs> strapped to your side. I don't think it's worth the risk. This is an exercise. We approach it as it's your students or them. Could a district allow teachers to be armed without requiring any of the training? Yes. In Texas, where families are grieving the tragedy in Uvalde. Now one more child! I promised my daughter I was gonna fight. It's gonna keep on happening. Pro-gun advocates are training teachers to be the first line of defense. What we're training these, these folks for is combat. This is combat. It's wild that you have to train for combat in yeah. school. Yeah, it's insane, but here we are. Uh, one whistle means the scenario is about to start. Gunshots are going to be the indicator. Uh, two whistles, scenario is over. Uh, and again, this will go. It'll go pretty quick. Okay. So y'all can go to your spots. We're about to start watching a scenario where the shooter basically starts shooting, and then other teachers are training to see how to stop him. They don't know exactly where he's going to come from. This is an exercise. Come on out. Hey, oh! In the first 10 months of 2022, there were 152 incidents involving gunfire at schools, 122 injured, and 50 killed. Jeff Sellers says schools should be preparing for combat to deter potential active shooters. In 2009, he started the Texas School Guardian Program, which trains eligible school staff to be the first line of defense. We approach it as it's you or them. It's your students or them. They're actively killing people. They will kill you if you're in front of them and you don't do something. That's the way we approach it. That's the way we have to approach it. I can't think of one single teacher from my entire school experience who would be up for this. They'd be like, nah. Not every teacher is a candidate. A lot of them, you know, when we started the program, were resistant to that. Said, I'm an educator, I'm not a security person. And nowadays they don't look at it that way, most of them don't. We are here in Uvalde, Texas, a community shattered by one of the deadliest school shootings in American history. 21 victims, 19 of them innocent children. The 77-page report details the 77 minutes of what's referred to as a lackadaisical approach. Hey, we're going in or we're staying here? What are we doing? There were almost 400 officers from at least seven different law enforcement agencies, all with the capacity, the ability, and the training to go in and stop the shooter, and yet they waited. That time frame of when, when a shooter starts shooting on a school, and the police get there, that's where we train the guardians. We call that the critical period because that's where most of the killing's done. Did a lot of people raise their hands and volunteer after Uvalde? Uh, we had probably about a 100% increase in inquiries about the program. The ones that don't 
where does their hesitation come from? Yeah, honestly, it's they're in larger cities and they're more liberal. Um, but the political division is pretty great in rural versus the cities. It's just a it's just a mindset. I get the no guns in schools thing, but again, this is something we have to do to protect kids. Uh, if they have a better solution, I'm, we're all for it. Everybody is, I'm sure. We are required to carry just nine millimeters, mm -hmm. um, and I just keep it in that holster. This is just an easy clip-on holster. And this, you don't have it loaded? Well, my magazine is in there, but it's there's not one in the chamber. Okay, got it. Yes. So I would just come get my vest, um, and you know, it just unstraps like that, mm -hmm. slide it over your head. It's got a double strap on it, um, and then I could get my weapon, and then I could go. Where is your gun on any given moment? Um, it just depends on the day. It depends on what I'm wearing because it's harder to conceal. If it's something that would show, I keep it in the safe. Um, but if not, and I can conceal it comfortably, then I have it on me. Do you think about it every day? Yeah. I mean, you know, just kind of physically every day, you know, either putting the gun in the safe or clipping it on. Like, it's just always on your mind. I'm always thinking, okay, if this happens, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Like if I knew I could see them in the hallway shooting students or coworkers, and I just sat here and did nothing, like that, I, could, I don't know how to live with myself with that. Today the, the exercise, uh, you know, you're having to shoot at an adult. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared to have to kill one of your students? Mm. I, if that I were pray I never have to do that, but like, if that were happening, I would have to just not think about them being a kid, but they are a person standing to either harm myself, my coworkers, my students. Like, you have to take the kid out of the equation and just look at them as a shooter, a threat. But, like, I don't know how you can ever really be ready for that. Um, and then, you know, of course, afterwards, I just, that would be something hard to, to deal with, to get through, to move forward with. I don't, I don't know how that would affect me, honestly. <laughs> Sellers has contracted with more than 200 schools that pay $1,200 per prospective guardian for training. He's instructed over 2,000 employees. As of 2020, about one in four Texas public school districts out of just over 1,000 said they've authorized teachers to carry a gun. Since 2015, we have seen about 300 intentional school shooting incidents. Today's deadly mass shooting is just the latest in what has sadly become a common occurrence in the United States. The carnage in our nation's schools has become painfully repetitive. There's data from the Washington Post that has shown that since Columbine, over 320,000 children in K-12 schools across the U.S. have been exposed to gun violence just in school. The prevalence of gun violence has increased so much that it is now the leading cause of death among children in the United States. I mean, Jackie, she, like any other nine-year-old little girl, full of life, love. I mean, she was our baby. She was, you know, our light of our lives. You know, she, you know, Javier Cáceres' daughter, Jacqueline, was one of the 21 people killed in the school shooting at Rob Elementary in Uvalde. 19 were children between the ages of 9 and 11. Just, you know, being from Texas and being from Uvalde, like, how do you describe the way people feel about guns? <laughs> Texas, I mean, it's everybody when their grandma has guns, you know. I mean, like I said, I have guns, you know, and it's for protection. I mean, I, I used to go just practice shoot, and, and, and that's, that was it. And I even showed my, my daughter and my son how to use it. Yes, yeah, so I know how to use it if I absolutely need to. Que viva No justice! No justice! No peace! Right now it's 106 degrees in this humid Texas town. It's a small town, but today it doesn't look small. There are so many families, neighbors, People in the community coming together and activists from all across Texas demanding transparency, accountability, and change. Look at all this. This is for our kids. 
friends. This is for justice. This is for accountability. But above everything, this is for our freaking kids. In the wake of the tragedy, Jasmine and others in the conservative-leaning community started the fight for gun reform. It's an uphill battle in a county that in November of 2022 helped re-elect Governor Greg Abbott, who not only opposes stronger gun control, but has reeled back existing restrictions. We need to make sure, as difficult as this can be, to find consensus and to move forward and to make legislation that will save lives. They're pushing to raise the minimum age to buy an assault-style weapon like the one used in the shooting from 18 to 21. We're about 22 year olds and this happened just when we were out of 17. We don't have all the answers, nobody does. For too long this conversation has been so polarized where it's either you're anti-gun or you're pro-gun. We have, I think what we have to do is figure out what is the third way, which is what are we all anti? Anti-gun violence, right? We are all pro-peace, we're all pro-safety. In Texas, it's obviously gonna be harder than it would be even in Florida because it's not, it's a state that's not nearly as politically close. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you so much. We'll be outside. I remember the Sandy Hook shooting. I was, I was seven, I was the same age as those kids. Not understanding why someone could do that to children. And here we are again, years later, same exact thing happens to my sister. I'm scared. I'm scared for, for my life at school. You shouldn't have to be scared at school. The scariest thing at school should be your grades. Not having to fear for my life that some man is going to come in and shoot me and my friends. About 95% of schools across the U.S. are implementing at least one, if not many, what we call school safety strategies, metal detectors, locker person searches, armed teachers. So don't respond until you get a radio traffic call. What's your take on arming teachers? There is no science available at the moment, absolutely none, that shows that arming teachers okay would either deter gun violence from happening to begin with, nor would it deter or reduce the lethality of a shooting once it was occurring. There is evidence that shows very clearly and very definitively that the increased presence of firearms leads to increased firearm violence. How do you feel about these programs to have more guns in schools? I don't think they should be armed because anything can happen. I mean, you have to be really trained, you know, but it's too, too risky. Yeah, I want to say I agree. It's, it's not worth the risk. I'd rather, if I was in school right now with an armed teacher, I'd rather not be shot. You, you feel you'd be more at risk if your teacher was armed? Yeah, there's so many mistakes that can happen and it's, I don't think it's worth the risk. If you're a teacher, where would you carry your gun on you in a drawer? It's super easy to walk up to someone and take a gun. And same thing with the training. When is it going to be enough? How much training are these teachers going to have? Well, that's a sad world we live in, but it's, that's the reality is that you need to feel safe in school. Your teacher has to have a gun. It shouldn't have to be your teacher's job to protect your life. Since 2014, the mishandling of guns in schools was reported at least 107 times. Of those, 39 guns were left accessible to children. 20 were unintentionally discharged. Another 20 were used in moments of personal stress or conflict. And six were mishandled during discipline. I would imagine most police and military would agree that to own and use a firearm well and with skill and responsibly requires an extensive level of training. And right now, what is being provided to teachers in the context of preparing them to carry an armed firearm into a school setting is not at that level. And y'all can go ahead and carry live. Not every teacher that volunteers can be a guardian in Seller's program. He requires his trainees to shoot with 90% accuracy and register 40 hours of courses that include active shooter and range training. Hot range. But his requirements aren't codified by state law. School districts decide for themselves the type and amount of training, if any, that school staff need to carry guns on campus. Legally speaking, could a district allow teachers to be armed without requiring any of the training? Yes. 
So Texas Penal Code 4603 allows a person to carry a handgun on a school, whether it's private or public, with written permission from uh, the school administration. And the code does not require any kind of training? No, it does not. They have to have their license to carry, right? So they have to have a clear criminal background check before they even get their license to carry. So there are certain prerequisites they have to meet to do that. As for instructors, while Texas does offer a school safety certification, that certification isn't actually required by law. So right now, you know, pretty much anybody can say, hey, I have some shooting experience, I'm gonna train your teachers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is scary. It is scary. Sellers also gives each trainee the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory, a psychological evaluation that's commonly used to assess candidates for law enforcement. So, so it's possible that somebody else who does what you do doesn't does not require do them the psych evaluation that you require. That's correct. Well, that's concerning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should be. Because, I mean, that does sound like the kind of recipe for disaster that parents fear. Right. It could. Yeah, possibly. The primary reason there is so much gun violence in the United States is because of the number of firearms we have in circulation. And we have permissive gun laws that make it easy for different individuals to obtain certain kinds of firearms. Which solutions have shown success to preventing mass shootings? There is an enormous amount of rigorous scientific evidence that has guided what we know about effective policies. From 1994 till 2004, this country had a federal assault weapons ban. And there's evidence that my colleagues have conducted that have demonstrated this. During that time, we saw a reduction in mass gun violence. We are, as a community, under attack on a daily basis because a lot of people don't take the time to understand that it isn't the thing that's the problem. It's the person. Andy Turner is the legislative director of the Texas State Rifle Association, a pro-Second Amendment group that lobbies for gun rights. The Uvalde shooter, he had been trying to obtain a gun. Nobody would buy it for him. He waited until it was legal. Then he purchased a lot of ammunition, and then he went and committed the shooting. A lot of the people in Uvalde are saying, let's raise the age to 21. What's wrong with that law? Here's the issue. If you are old enough to fight, fight and die for your country, if you are old enough to be tried as an adult, if you are old enough to vote, if you are old enough to sign a contract and be held to the terms of that contract, then you are old enough for your constitutional rights. How come automatic weapons are regulated and that's not unconstitutional and semi-automatic weapons are not at the same degree? I don't think they should be. Okay. Has there been a, le a, a gun control legislation that you've been in favor of or that you've been okay with? I do not believe we should make laws that relate to the Constitution, that deprive people of their constitutional rights um, if they are law-abiding citizens. The main goal is to try to ban assault weapons. So while I fully support an assault weapons ban, I have, I'm being realistic and that probably won't happen in Texas. So raising the age is the, I think, is genuinely the bare minimum. In June, just one month after the Uvalde shooting, President Biden signed into law the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first major federal gun safety legislation passed in decades. But the bill didn't mandate age requirements or ban any types of weapon or ammo. What do you tell people who in Texas who are so afraid that your advocacy is trying to come for their guns or even their ARs if there's a ban. We've said it multiple times that we're not coming for your guns, but I, it's still stuck in their brain that we're trying to take away their Second Amendment rights. A group of families from Uvalde, parents who lost their kids, survivors, siblings like Jasmine, are meeting here in Washington, D.C. today with other families. Did they say where his office is, um, Cornyn? No, but they know. And try to advocate for senators to vote in favor of this ban, but also to rally. Uh, they're going to be speaking out, telling their experiences, talking about the kind of damage that these weapons do, and hoping to gather enough support to especially get some Republicans on board. 
Okay, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Jasmine Caceres. I'm from Uvalde, Texas. Um, my little sister, Jacqueline Caceres, was one of the 21 that was killed at Robb Elementary. What do you get to express when you take these meetings, and how did the politicians generally react? I have the investigative report that was released. Show it to them in my book. That's the weapon that was used to shoot my sister in the chest and 18 other kids and two teachers. Have you ever seen the damage of a 5'5", five, 6'6", five, boy, what it does to a nine-year-old girl? Like, you've seen what it does to the military. Imagine what it does to a little kid. Or the, the waiting, the 77 minutes. Imagine having, especially as a little kid, having to wait over an hour, bleeding to death in the same room as the guy who shoot, shot you. Do you think that Texas could implement laws that limit the ability for somebody who is dangerous to get their hands on a weapon and at the same time secure schools in this way? Sure, absolutely. Do you see that happening? No. Honest answer. Honest. How do you respond to people who say, you know, the solution is more gun control, not just adding more guns to schools? My response is that no gun control law is going to prevent an evil person from committing an evil act. If they don't have guns, they're going to use knives, they're going to use explosives, they're going to use a vehicle through a building. Um, you're not going to stop evil from committing evil. But is that a justification to just not pass the laws? No, it's not. There's no reason they can't pass laws like that. I think, I think the hesitation is that people are afraid that they're going to lose their gun rights altogether. Do you think that is an honest or a real concern, or is that something that they hear from politicians who try to push all or nothing scenarios? I think based on the past couple years, the national political climate, I think is a real concern. There are people that think civil war is coming. So I think it's a real concern, at least down here. We should hear them. And what you're here to say today is plain and simple. If you want to protect kids in this country, get these assault weapons off the streets. People are willing to take a risk until it's their kid that's shot. It's the politicians that don't understand or genuinely don't think it's going to happen to them or to their kids. It's happened everywhere else. The odds are against you. It's going to happen again, and that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for it to not happen again.